Hello, how are you? This is Lawi Curtis. I am your host today. Okay, in this podcast, I will be talking about how to how possibly it is, you know, to own seven figures and more in fashion in a bad economy. Okay, now this podcast is holding on the 12th of November 2021. And it's a discussion board, okay? I'll be sharing insights and uh, my listeners are also gonna be contributing, you know, to the conversation so that we will all learn together from one another. So the question is, um, how possible is it to earn seven figures and more in fashion in a bad economy, okay? As of today, the Nigerian economy is not in good shape. Okay, it's not news, it's not new news, it's not news yet. That as the situation we are in, I mean, we're in a situation where the Nigerian currency, the Naira, is on a free fall, on a free fall, in that the value of the Naira to the dollar is uh, outrageous. Okay, last time I checked at the parallel market, uh, the US dollar, one US dollar is around 560 Naira. Okay, and that is not good at all i mean considering some a few years back just about two years ago it was around 250 naira or 200 naira to a dollar or 250 naira to a dollar yeah now it is increasing you know and we don't know where it will stop so that for example imagine someone who earned a million naira you know in two years uh in the past two years in the last two years and a million naira when the exchange rate was at still at 250 to a dollar that will mean the person has earned uh four thousand dollars so if someone is earning a million naira okay or if someone earned a million naira about two years ago thereabouts at uh presumably 250 naira to a dollar it would have meant that the person has earned four thousand dollars if the person earns a million naira every month for 12 months that is four thousand dollars times 12 months that's forty eight thousand dollars that's a very respectable income which would have allowed them to travel abroad on vacation and not have issues with getting visas but today at around 560 for the life of me the mathematics is not even <laughs> it's not even straightforward okay but well, let's assume it's uh let's just benchmark it at 500 okay if the million naira of some years ago now when you convert it to the dollars right it's just roughly two thousand dollars two thousand dollars that's very 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 low and why is that because we're in a bad economy now I mean, it's no news that the prices of commodities in the market, they are skyrocketing. It's no news. I mean, of recent, the price of gas has shot up, okay? Cooking gas has shot up uh, you know, dramatically and most uh, basic food stock. Now, in the space of uh, the fashion industry, right? For those of us into apparel, apparel production, okay? There's this uh, lamentation that is going around that the cost of fabrics are skyrocketing, thus eating into the profits generated by the average fashion designer or tailor. So which means that the profits are being eroded right under our noses because of expensive you know, fabrics and uh, sewing supplies that you need to get. So that our uh, breeds more anxiety because i've talked to a lot of fashion entrepreneurs okay and what i've come to learn is there's a lot of anxiety out there okay i mean when you now have uh, fashion designers or tailors who are struggling with pricing i mean some tailors as of three years ago they've not managed to charge more than ten thousand euro for a particular outfit that they make now that the value exchange rate has dropped you know, they are still selling at the same 10,000. Yet the cost of uh, living has caught up with the income they are generating. That's not a good uh, situation to be in, okay? So all the point I'm driving at is this, 
we are in a situation where the economy is eroding our incomes. The, the economy is affecting, you know, the capabilities of those in the fashion space. So the thing is, what are we gonna do about it? This conversation happened, I think about a month ago or two months ago in one of my WhatsApp communities. Okay, for those that bought my ready to wear on the budget course. And uh, the conversation went along the line of, oh, now that things are expensive, how will tailors survive? So I figured that that uh, question being asked was going to trigger panic in the minds of the members of that WhatsApp community. So I had to step in and share some insights with them. Now those insights, right, that I shared with them, they sowed the seed of the millionaire tribe that I've been talking about of recent. Because I remember uh, one of the, you know, my role models, Pastor Samadhi, I mean, I've heard him say it a lot of times, that uh, crises are opportunities to become, you know, wealthy. That when there's a crisis, it doesn't mean that there's no money. What it means is simply that money has changed hands. So when we're in a crisis where the economy is on a free fall, as it were, you know, considering exchange rates, which are impact directly on the prices of things, okay, leading to inflation and what have you, money is still in circulation, but it is going to some people while it is leaving some people. So crises are moments of opportunities for some people and there are moments of disaster for some people. Now the question is this, in this economy we are in, what uh, side of the divide do you wanna be in? Do you wanna be in the side or on the side of uh, those that are thriving, okay? In the crisis that we are in right now, or you wanna be in the, uh, divide, you know, in this on the side of those that are struggling in this situation. So I would like to know, please, I would like to hear from you. What part of the divide would you like to be on? Do you want to be part of those that are saying the bad economy is impoverishing us, impoverishing us, or the bad economy is giving me opportunities to earn more? Please, what part of the divide would you like to be in? I would like to know from you. I'd like you to share with me, please. Okay, I'm waiting for you in the comments. Okay, so while I'm um, waiting to hear your views, you know, the thing is this, what are you doing about your situation to improve your finances in your fashion business in spite of the expensive nature of things, okay? In spite of the expensive nature of things in the market as it were right now. What are you doing about it, okay? I'm asking this question because it's a lot easier for us to avoid, you know, um, pressing matters that reveal our weaknesses. It's human nature, okay? Applies to you as it applies to me. It applies to you as it applies to me. Nobody wants to be called out for their weaknesses. Nobody wants to. It's only natural. However, the thing is this, you see, be true to yourself, okay? Lie to the whole world if you if you care, but never lie to yourself because the day you start believing your own lies, that is the day you have buried yourself alive. So guys, we're in a situation where the economy is playing hard, hard to catch, okay? And... Um, Cost of things are high. How are you thriving? So I'd like to hear from you and then I will share my own thoughts also. Like I told you, crises are opportunities for some people to do what? Become wealthy and there are opportunities, there are occasions for other people to do what? Crash. So you are either thriving in a bad economy or you are surviving in a bad economy. In fact, surviving in a bad economy is even better than struggling in a bad economy. Okay, so I'll uh, pick your choice. Having said that, 
Okay, I can see Bukola says, oh, thriving in a bad economy is what he wants. Why someone else is uh, surviving in a bad economy is what he wants. Okay, to each his own. To each his own. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, let's start the conversation. So, guys, I would like to ask you, how possible, how possible is it, okay, to earn seven figures? We're talking about a million naira and above in a bad economy like the one we're having right now. Would you be free or kind enough to share your thoughts? I would like to learn from you because when I sent out uh, podcast, my broadcast messages this morning via WhatsApp, I got a couple of people that told me that it's very possible. And I said, I would love them to come in, you know, and share their wonderful thoughts on the conversation. So please, let's hear from you how possible is is it okay and if you think it is possible please can you shed light with us on how you think it is possible or what you think can be done because we are here to learn from one another okay now please do not underestimate whatever you have to say reason is that you may think you don't know nothing but the truth is, what you know may be what will save somebody's business today. Okay? Because there are many times I hear feedback from people as far how the classes that I hold, you know, open their minds, help them to make the right decision. And I'm like, I didn't say this, I didn't say that, I didn't say that that you're mentioning. But you meant you picked all of this from the things I was saying? It amazes me too. So the same thing applies to you guys. So I would like to hear from you. Who wants to share with us? Who would like to take on the mic and share with us? No, Remember yes, this was the video podcast. Oh, Kikelomo, you're welcome. Yes, sir. I like your bravery. So please share with us. Okay. So um, an average designer would believe that getting to seven figures, which is like one million naira and above will require a lot of work, a lot of mm -hmm. others, probably a lot of work that the person cannot take on right now. Mm -hmm. So what I can work is going for the kind of work that will bring you more profit and less work. Mm -hmm. More profit, more and, profit less work. and less work. I yes. love that. Thank you so, so much. OK, sir. So for Please example continue. now. For example, now, if I make a gown and someone in Nigeria wants to pay 20000 for it, and I know someone in USA will believe $50 is, is, very, is too small for that particular gown, and the person is ready to pay $100, that's more profit mm. for me as a Nigerian. Yeah. So I'll prefer yeah. to target someone that, that is ready to pay more mm. and could be less. Instead of sewing three clothes for that same amount, I'm saying mm. more clothes. It's and less work. Mm. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm actually writing. He says, target someone who can pay more, okay? Camille, but uh, gives you less work. Beautiful. I said, go for profit, okay? Go for more profit and less work. I love what you summarized, you know, the summary you gave us and the example that you cited. Very excellent. I hope everybody is learning. I just wrote that down. And I can see here, uh, I love Kele for what he said. He said, it's very possible, but frankly, I don't know how. That's part of why we are here, okay? That is part of why we are here. You will learn, you know, some helpful tips that can help you in the right direction, okay? so. I love that. Now, I have a lower formula here. says one thing is mindset, because even during COVID, many people people seriously cashed out. Very true. So let me tell you uh, a story. I have a couple of stories, really, you know, but let me tell you a story or two, which, uh, which happened in the, uh, in the midst of uh, the COVID-19, okay, lockdown last year, 2020. Then I'm going to add one more story, which happened this year. Yeah. Now, during the lockdown last year, 
I remember then I had a coaching program called Fashion Six uh, Pro. Fashion Six Pro, yeah. So the coaching program was for those that were targeting to earn a million monthly in their businesses. So that was uh, the purpose of that coaching program. So as of the time that the federal government announced lockdown in April, okay, or I think it was uh, the last week of March, yeah, they announced uh, lockdown. Many fashion businesses were like, ah, trouble has come. No more parties, no more O1 bears, no more events, no more people going out. How do we survive? So I called a meeting of all my, you know, members, the, all the members of my coaching programs. So that is the Fashion 6 Pro. At the same time, those in the Fashion 6, uh, uh, Fashion 6 Basic. Yeah, so those were the two coaching programs. One was billed at 5,000 monthly. The other was billed at 50,000 quarterly. So I called everybody and I said, hey, we need to talk. It is no longer business as usual. I need you guys to drop everything you're saying you are doing right now and start looking into face mask and um, uh, personal protective equipment, the ones used by you know medical personnel, you know to keep themselves from air to two to pre prevent uh, coronavirus, you know, uh, infections. So, and I told them that it's a medical crisis that we are having, health crisis that we are having or that we had at the time. And the this health crisis, right, would require clothing that are necessary to, uh, uh, to combat the pandemic because everybody will be sitting at home. So I said they had April and May of 2020 to cash out on the face mask business. By June la last year, I, I said, I told them that by June last year, everybody will want to venture into face mask business because of the bandwagon, you know, uh, syndrome that affects Nigerians. Many people don't think, once they see somebody's uh, business that is thriving, everybody, uh, you know, goes into that line of business because they think, oh, there's a lot of money to be made there. So I said, and I told them that when you create your face mask, please do not sell them in pieces, that is in units, rather sell them in packs, the same way you see briefs, singlets, you know, on these boxes are being sold in packs. And I said, the profit they will make per pack will be tangible. And uh, a couple of them, you know, listened to the idea, to the advice, Many did not. The funny thing was that I went further and I said, go and look at your current customer list. That is customers that you have, that have bought from you, that you have good relationships with, or you may not even have that great a relationship with. Ask them, their organizations, in case there won't be lockdown, will they be interested in you supplying them face masks? And I told them, when you talk to these customers, offer them irresistible deals such that they will make a profit off you. So for instance, you may talk to a banker, right? A customer of yours that is a banker who would pitch you to his manager. And when the manager agrees for you to come, you know, uh, make for them, you agree a commission on every unit you make. I said, when it's a win-win deal, you are going to cash out. Do you know that within a week, one of the participants there, Vivian is her name, she's based in Oweri. She's based in Oweri, Southern Nigeria. She called in and said, coach, I just, I just hit a jackpot. That she called, you know, her customers and told them the idea. She was an ex-banker, so she had some customers within the banking sector. She talked to them and they were like, oh, we are exempted from uh, the lockdown. People can still come, you know, and, uh, you know, come to the bank and what a view, but we will need face masks. And these bankers, you know, they pitched on her behalf, they recommended her highly, and boom, she got orders of 3 million in one month. 
Now, the coaching program, Fashion 6 Pro, was meant to help them achieve 3 million in three months, which is on the average 1 million per month. She did it in one month, April last year. She shared the testimonial on the group. I posted it on my Facebook page. By that time, I, by the time I posted it on Facebook, uh, uh, selling of uh, face masks had already become, you know, um, a bandwagon thing. Everybody was already doing it. So I remember another of my business students at the time, uh, Ahmed, okay, Ahmed offered to give out face masks at the, the local government where he resides in. He resides in the local part of Lagos. His local government was motion local government. So he went to local government and offered to give out face masks for free. Right there while he was giving the face mask, People came from all parts of Lagos to come and get face masks because face masks were novel at the time. They were novel things, you know, at the time. Uh, long story short, he got contracts to make for some insurance companies that ran into over a million era. He got contracts to make for a royal family somewhere in Ogun State where the Oba was trying to make for his whole community. He got several contracts you know, to supply. Not only that, those that gave him the contracts became his personal clients, buying his um, business credit to wear men's wear for as low as 100,000 per unit, per dress. So that was one of the things that happened. One of the members of that community, third story now, Abimbola. Abimbola turned her home into a production factory. She had to reject, you know, some major contracts from some big brands in Lekki aspect of uh, part of Lagos. Why? She was overwhelmed with work. She got in one month, got over 1.5 million naira worth of uh, orders. I mean, we're seeing back to back month after month. That was in the midst of the pandemic. Stories that are real, okay, from my communities. Now, can you see people were cashing out in millions during the pandemic? So when I created this topic and I said, is it possible? It isn't just to come and drag us to have a conversation and spend time, you know, jollificating here. No, I want to steer you to see beyond the bad economy so that you can do what? Stand up and go do whatever it takes to succeed. When you are in a bad economy, what you need is creative ideas, okay? You need creative ideas. Oh my, I've started teaching. <laughs> Can you imagine? You need creative ideas, okay? That can leverage on the season and you will thrive, okay? Creative ideas, right? Inspired ideas that you can apply. Why do you get inspired ideas? Okay. That's a good one. There are so many ways by which you can get an inspired idea. Now, ideas are, um, they are a dime a dozen. You know, they are very cheap to get. Yes, many people have ideas. It's implementation that matters. Yeah, I've heard that a lot. But I've come to tell you guys that uh, there are some ideas that are not ordinary ideas. <laughs> because they carry the seed of wealth, they, they carry the seed of breakthrough, okay? So now I call them inspired ideas. They are usually flashes of inspiration that comes to you, okay? Flashes of inspiration that comes to you that you did not think about. The thought comes to you like a fresh breath. Oh, you know, when you breathe, fresh breath, flashes of inspiration. Now, when they come, you capture them on paper, then you create time to meditate on them. They may require you going to learn a new skill in addition to what you already know, or they may just be exactly what you need because you have the resources to make them happen, okay? So like the example of the, you know, uh, face marks thing I talked about. I mean, face marks were normal, but the inspired idea was that People need to add a two month window to cash out on the health crisis that has been set upon by the pandemic and lockdown.
two months window. And that was exactly what happened. So when I shared that idea with uh, my members and they ran with it, many of them cashed out. They couldn't even conduct coaching. One of them actually had to go see a psychologist because she broke down from the weight of the work that came in, producing simply face masks. So on the surface, inspired ideas are, they look ordinary. But the truth of the matter is that when you execute them, that is when you act on them, they deliver tremendous results that you'll be wondering like, where did this come from? How did I come to get, uh, how, did, how did I stumble on this idea that is now helping me to cash out? So if there's anything else I would like to add, I would say that you do not underestimate all those flashes of inspiration that you always, you always have. They can come to you in the bathroom. They can come to you in the toilet. They can come to you while you're cooking. They can come to you in your dreams. They can come to you uh, on the road anywhere you are. But the thing is this, you need a gadget for capturing flashes of inspiration, okay? Or flashes of inspired ideas. So what is the gadget that you need? Can someone please tell me what is the gadget that you would need to capture inspired ideas? Do you know the gadgets? Please tell me. So who would like to try? I'd like to know what there's a gadget that you can use to capture inspired ideas. So as the ideas come, oh, comfort. Comfort has done excellently. I mean, you caught me on our ways. Thank you. God bless you. Oh, comfort. I'm proud of you. Yeah, you're making me proud. I mean, that's my fashion six ultra. <laughs> I love that. A pen and a paper is a very powerful tool. They, they, I mean, they make a wonderful combination as a gadget for capturing inspired idea. You need pen and paper. Oh, if you don't have a pen and paper with you, what else can you make use of? Your phone notepad, thank you so much. For me, I have a, my WhatsApp diary. So for me, I coined the WhatsApp diary some years ago, I think back in 2016, when I described it as a WhatsApp group that you create that has only your phone numbers in it. So that whether you have network on your phone or not, you can always capture any ideas that come to mind in your diary, since it has only your number. So you can capture your, you know, thoughts and ideas there. And before you know it, boom, results coming. And I love what I'm hearing now. So you see, Caleb says he gets inspiration from Instagram too. Beautiful. While somebody else goes to Instagram and they are depressed, you go to Instagram and you get inspiration. Isn't that lovely? So guys, you need to do what? Understand that, you know, inspired ideas, which is what I call, which is what, what I also call inspiration. They are the keys for you to do what? Blue and uh, get into the seven figures realm. And like Ike Lomo said earlier, you don't have to do more work than necessary for you to do what? On a million, you don't. However, if your mind if your mind is not wired right, you will not attract those kind of ideas. So guys, I need you to do something for me. You need to get sponge and soap, good leather soap, okay? Depending on how messed up your mind may be, maybe you can get medicated soap and you are gonna have to wash your hair because if your mind is not wired right, inspired ideas will not come your way. How do I know that your mind is not wired right? <laughs> when you have a... ...necessity to always think of how things will work. When you have the propensity to always think of how things will not work, why things will not work. To a large extent, your mind is what you would only attract ideas that uh, reinforces your negative beliefs. So please, if you are used to always worrying, 
always seeing how things will not work. Nothing will work for you. It's not a cause. It's just the way the world has been wired. So please, you need to get, you know, sponge and what? Soap to wash your mind. Okay? Because as a man thinks in his heart, so he becomes. Whatever you think is what you become. If I ask you, have you ever set a sales goal of a million euro in a month? Have you ever set a sales goal of a million euro in a month? Please let me know. I mean, let's 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 do that as a practical exercise. Have you ever set yourself a sales goal saying that, hey, I want to earn a million euro this month or next month? Have you ever done that? Please let me know if you have done that. Oh, does it matter whether you achieved it or not? It doesn't matter. Have you ever set it? Consciously set it and written it down. Please let me know. I'd like to hear from you. By the way, thank you, Butterfair Coded Ways. Thank you. You just validated what I said about the WhatsApp that you've been using it since 2018. Awesome. Awesome. So somebody just told me that she has never consciously written down a million euro as a sales goal. Two persons, actually, three persons, four persons. Oh my, oh my. Why? Oh, five persons. <clears throat> I'm beginning to lose my voice, guys. Don't let me lose my voice. Six persons. Please don't give me heart attack, guys. Why? Hmm. Okay, this is what we're going to do. Can you do something for me? Please get your pen and paper with you right now. And I would like you to write down that I desire to earn one million naira. Now, write it in full. Please don't write it in English. Write it in full. That is the naira sign, number one, digit one, and six zeros. I would like to earn a million naira in December 2022. I desire to earn one million naira in December 2022. Write it on paper, snap it, and send it to the group. Write it on paper, snap it, and send it to the group. Please write it on paper, send, uh, snap it, and send to the group. Oh my, you can't be in my class and be thinking less please this is not a podcast that you come to just to come feel good no it's a podcast you come to for transformation and reformation <laughs> okay so please do the exercise and then uh share on the group right away i desire to earn one million naira in december 2022 okay write it on paper snap it and send to the group by the way, for those of us that are listening to the podcast, okay, we recorded it live in the Telegram group, uh, right to a masterclass. So, sorry, not 2022. I said December. Oh, pardon me, 2021. Sorry, 2021. 2021 is what I meant. Pardon me, please. I desire to earn a million naira in December 2021. I mean, that's just next month. Ha, 2022. Thank you so much for delivering us, ma'am. Actually, I am leaking only where, where I am right now. And I think this only is so sweet that they teleported me into the future. So I found myself in 2022 talking to you guys, you know, like you're already on a million naira and more monthly. Okay, so please do that exercise, snap and send to the group, okay? So we can check that out. So uh, enough of that. When you write it down on paper, some things begin to happen to your mind. Your mind begins to walk in another dimension. Let me share some insights that I've learned. One of them is this. Whatever you find difficult to write down, you will not attract ideas. Okay? Along that line. If wishes were us, beggars would write. 
Okay. Oh, pardon me. Okay, so let me activate the sending media. Sorry, I need to activate that. Okay, so that people can, uh, you know, send. Then after I will deactivate it. Thank you. So I've activated the send media, so you can now send. So please, you can now send. So, oh, excellent. I can see um, Olufunla, you're right. Yeah, Olufunla, you sent us. Okay, uh, Tino has sent us. Oh, I love your handwriting, Tino. Wow, I love your handwriting. Wow, Olufunla, you wrote it like you're writing a check. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, and then my dear Bola Luagbebiga, my my my, you are actually speaking speaking it into reality. I love this. Wow, I wish I don't know all your name, so you pardon me. I can see someone here who wrote that is that one million by December twenty twenty one. Beautiful handwritings, beautiful handwritings. I'm actually downloading the pictures to see. Oh, someone even wrote the uh the amount and signed off on it like it's a check. Awesome, awesome. Awesome. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Be this is beautiful. Okay. So now, this is the deal, guys. You just done something that I love, which is you are breaking the rules, right? The rules of success, as in the rules of uh, the invisible, turning the invisible into visible. Okay. You are drawing from the you know infinite intelligence like uh napoleon hill we say in you don't know, think and go rich okay or you are drawing from the ephemeral something that is not yet you know in the physical and you are capturing it on paper when you do that this is what happens as you've written it on paper and you stare at what you have written it won't be long before you find your mind only painting pictures for you of that figure that you have written down and how you can accomplish it. When you go to bed at night and you sleep over it, when you wake up in the morning, crazy ideas will come to you. Okay? Crazy ideas will be coming to you. And as those crazy ideas are coming to you, Something else will happen to you guys. Something else will happen. Can I tell you what will happen next? You've written it down. Be looking at this thing you've written down again and again and again and again. Hmm. Take it with you everywhere you go. Hmm. When you sleep at night and you wake up in the morning, crazy ideas will be coming to you. So can I tell you what would happen next? once you know these crazy ideas have come i mean crazy ideas of things you can do you will be teleported into another realm where you are thinking nothing is impossible yet you know you have no idea of how it's going to manifest so um can i tell you or would you like to tell me what would what are the things that would be happening to you as you know you write them down Okay. Okay, Grace, no problem. By the way, I can see uh Batife uh, coded way saying this class is coming from the place of the art of the Abba Father. Of course, yes, it's an inspired class. Okay, it's an inspired class, really. Oh, comfort is fantasizing it already. I love that man that's the that's the way it starts comfort that's the way it starts because many of us have robbed ourselves of the opportunity to attract good things to our lives yet you go to conventions you go to conferences you go to mountains you pray from morning till night and uh, you come back disbelieving unbelieving not believing that you can actually achieve what you have you know set to the reason many of us have not written down the goals we want to write down is that we are afraid that it may not come to pass or we feel like in a, we feel in a subconscious mode that 
We don't think we deserve it. <laughs> you don't think you are skilled enough. You don't think you are capable enough. That's what happens, okay? So I'm happy about the things that, I mean, I'm learning you guys are saying. Comfort is already fantasizing. Ibuku is uh, saying our mind is accommodating it like never before. I love that. That is excellent. That is excellent. I love that. So guys, keep it coming. Remember, we are here to help one another. We are here to share. Now, Tino Art says, when you write your goals down, your mind, you know, uh, opens and is ready for opportunities to achieving them when it comes your way. Thank you. Now, the thing is this. I once read many years ago from, uh, uh, in one of the books written by Brian Tracy regarding goals. He said, when you write down your goals, right, you are 97 percent uh you have a 97 percent chance of seeing it come to pass when you write down your goals you are amongst uh, the three percent that are likely to achieve it but when you don't write it down all you would have is fantasy all you would have is ideas so the law of success that will work for you will be this adage that if wishes were horses, beggars will ride. So writing down your goal is very important. Now, when you write your, down your goal, naturally, your mind is wired to flourish. Your mind is wired to flourish. So if you dedicate many of your hours on in a day, thinking about things not working for you. Your mind will flourish on that thought and deliver opportunities for you not to make it. If you are entertaining thoughts of you making it, achieving success in whatever goal you have set, your mind will feed on that particular thought and begin to churn out ideas. That's why when we sleep at night, our body is ready, resting, but our mind isn't. Our mind is still working. This time around, the mind is connecting to the forces of the universe, the energies in the universe, okay, around you to dig up ideas that can help you to achieve that goal of yours. That's how it works. Have you, have you ever crossed your mind the day you started your business? Didn't you ever cross your mind? Like, how will I get my first customer? I mean, people will just literally walk up to me and pay me. Have you ever thought uh, come to you cross your mind? If it has crossed your mind, you are we are you are we are in the same shoes, okay? We're in the same shoes. So today you have customers coming to you, buying from you, and you're feeling good. But there was a time that you had no idea how, to, how it was going to happen. But then you started the journey by saying, hey, my life must be better. My own way of making my life better is to start a business, selling things, and then opportunities are coming your way. So when we tell you that uh, fashion, you know, uh, as a business is 30% the fashion and designing, that is the design and production, and 70% business of fashion. I hope you understand now. So if you are fixated on oh, creating beautiful products, hmm, doesn't guarantee nada when it comes to making money and uh, you know earning seven figures. The income you want to earn is in your mind. If you cannot picture it, you can't get it. Simple. Now, you may be wondering, like, oh, I'm talking with so much, uh, you know, confidence. Please be mindful that I'm learning at the same time I'm sharing with you because I am on the uh, oath, so to speak, to apply what I'm teaching you guys. So, which means I'm as much a student of my own class. So I have to go out there and apply them because you can't go and apply what we're talking about and you're getting results while I'm still broke. No, 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 no. I won't be a signboard 
to lead you to your promised land. I will wear my shoes and we'll walk, we'll walk the talk, you know, together. So, guys, please, that's how it works. Okay. Your mind, your mind is the key. So if your mind is filled with a lot of negative stories, negative experiences, negative imaginations, sorry, all of these things we're saying will not work for you. So don't bother wasting your time. What you need to do is go get some mind mind cleansing soap and sponge. Then wash all the negativity in your mind. That's what you need to do first. So go get books on how to deal with you know your mindsets. You can get a book like No Excuses by Brian Tracy. No Excuses is a wonderful book that would help you, really. Yeah. To uh, stop uh, giving excuses or uh, we, all those negative thoughts, the self defeating thoughts, you know, from holding you bound. Now, please, I'd like you to know that uh, this is not a scripted conversation. So it's not like I put up oh, a series of points I'm sharing with you, okay? I'm just speaking as inspired. Okay, so you already learned anyways, you know, the power of your mind, writing down the goal that you would like to accomplish. Having said that, what's the next thing? I said the moment you write down the goal you want to accomplish and you look at it intently, ideas will begin to come to your mind. Please. Do not discount any idea that comes to your mind. Because in my own experience, it is those stupid ideas that I never gave, you know, uh, gave a thought that actually has brought me more income than the ones I put all my energies into. Okay? Every idea that comes to your mind, write it down. I watched uh, back in 20, I think 2003 or 2006. I can't tell, remember the year exactly, but I remember it was a CNN um, show hosted by Richard Quest, you know, business traveler with Richard Quest, where he interviewed Sir Richard Branson back then, you know, at an airport, I think in Heathrow or so, yeah, in the UK. And then he asked him, you know, how he was able to do so well in his business, amongst other things. So one of the things that Brand, uh, uh, Richard Branson mentioned was that always have a pen and paper with you everywhere you go. That no matter how sharp your brain is, right, it cannot be sharper than a pen and paper because ideas can come to you at any point in time. And he said, if you miss an idea that comes to you, which is probably a great idea, you would have missed out a big opportunity. He stressed further, that is Richard Branson, in that video, he stressed further that, oh, you may get an inspired idea that you know somewhere in you, you can't explain, but you just have an understanding that this will work big time if I give it my best shot. And you forget to write it down. You, you, you have a mental note, right? Oh, I'm going to write it down. I'm going to uh, think about it when I get home. He said, you would forget the idea. The next time you would see it is on TV where someone is already applying that same idea. And he said, the universe, the way he has noticed the world works is that there are a thousand people who are getting the same idea as you at the same time. So it's whoever runs with it that will get the results that is in the idea. So if somebody says ideas are very cheap, please let them know that not all ideas are cheap, okay? Because some ideas will take you to the next level in your life while others will just keep you stranded. So you don't know which one of them is going to do the magic for you. However, if you want to identify them early, they are usually those ideas you did not consciously think about because when you sit to think about your business and you're like what would i like to sell then you are actually consciously engaging your mind to think you would get oh good ideas but you don't know whether they will work or not inspired ideas come when you least expect you need to experience it for you to understand what i'm saying please because i'm flogging the matter too much okay so i'll let that rest so next thing i would like you to please take note is this in a bad economy like this 
for you to get uh, seven figures is very, very, very possible. Very possible. So two things I observe that you can do that can help you out. Number one, begin to work on getting international clients. Begin to work on getting international clients, okay? Begin to work on getting international clients. And uh, number two is spread your net. Spread your net locally, okay? Please, you need to spread your net. So when I say spreading your net, I'm referring to don't just stay in one spot right now. Don't say, hey, uh, where I am right now, people that don't pay well, you know, people don't pay well, that's wasting your time. If people don't pay where you are right now, you are not a tree move, okay? Even though you see trees, you know, stay in one spot, their roots go very deep and far. So you are not a tree, you've got legs, move, okay? So guys, in an economy like ours, we're looking at the uh, exchange rate, okay, the zero to a dollar, the thing is this, you need to start thinking about how can I get clients outside of the country? How can I get clients out of Nigeria? in countries where their currency is better than ours. Simply put, okay? How can I get more clients in a country where their currency is better than ours? Now, not just that alone, you wanna find out, you know, how to get clients, okay? In countries, that's the first one, I'm retreating it, where their currencies, where their currency is better than ours or your native country's currency. Number two that you need to look at is this. You want to focus on countries where business transactions are easy where business transactions are easy. Oh, you can be in Nigeria and get uh, a client in any of the countries abroad, okay? <clears throat> if the country where you're getting customers don't have financial systems that can allow you to receive international payments, then you are in a mess. You are in a bind. That is the gospel truth. I've had situations where the countries in which I had customers, I had a potential customer, she could not make transfer to me in Nigeria. Oh, I didn't have international, I didn't have a domiciliary account at the time, actually. Please, those of us just joining, can you please mute your mic? You are affecting the recording. Okay, so having said that, um, the deal is this. You want to find clients in new countries where the exchange rate, you know, with your own native country, right? There's a wide gap. Let me give you a, okay, no, I won't go into that for now. Let me just uh, break down the process first. Now, you want to focus on countries where it is easy for you to engage in transactions and get your money while you are based in Nigeria or wherever your home country is. So you don't want to have customers in a country where they love what you're selling, they want to pay for it, but they don't have a means of paying. For instance, Nigerians are not allowed to have, uh, you know, to receive payment via PayPal, yet they can make what? They can buy and they can open a PayPal account, fund it, and then buy things abroad, but they can't receive payments using PayPal. So it already means that there are some countries that an average Nigerian will not be able to sell in, whereas somebody in Benin Republic, someone else in Ghana will be able to transact in those countries. 
Okay, so that's what I mean. So you don't want to focus your marketing on the wrong on a great audience in a wrong country, regardless of how beautiful their exchange rate is. So those are part of the things that you need to consider. Okay, if you are going to be looking for customers abroad, you know, in order for you to you know earn more, just like Ikel almost said earlier. So what else do I need to share here? Mm. Is there another thing you would like me to share? To you would like to add to what I just shared concerning getting customers abroad? Because the only other thought that is coming to mind is um, you need to learn how to market and sell in those countries. Or better put, you need to learn how to attract customers in those countries. So those are the three steps. Yeah. So number one, again, let me recap. Number one will be um how to, you know, uh okay, you need to learn how to oh sorry, you need to <laughs> oh pardon me, I've mixed up what I was saying. Number one is actually you need to identify countries, okay, where their exchange rate is better than your own native country. So in our case, I'm in Nigeria, I'm looking for country, uh countries where I can get clients you know, who can pay me and I'll earn more if I change it to the era. So that helps my journey to get to a million and above faster. I mean, it's no brainer. So please give me some examples of countries that you know that have a better exchange rate than ours. Can you please share, for, share with me? Please do share with me some of the countries. And if you know the current exchange rates, would you be kind enough to share them also? Okay, yeah. So, okay, Sarah just mentioned the United Kingdom. Okay, Tino has already mentioned United Kingdom and the USA. Okay. Okay, Sarah just mentioned Canada also. France, okay. So France is coming from Caleb. Interesting. And I hope you guys are learning okay and getting insights in these conversations that we are having okay so i'm waiting on you the netherlands yeah netherlands is a great country yeah where you can get clients okay and i'm sure there must be something that is influencing you you know your suggestions of these countries Okay, so yeah, Dublin is Ireland, so you can change it to Ireland, I R E L E N D, Ireland. Then okay, Germany, yeah, Germany is another great country you can get clients from. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so I'm sure there is a lot more you guys can share, but then these are just a few examples that we can roll with. Okay, now do you, I noticed that you guys are focused more on uh, Europe living out uh, okay europe and north america what about other countries too are you saying that there are no countries in africa whose currencies are better than nigeria's you will be amazed you will be amazed that they are okay so Ghana, yeah, Ghana is great. I mean, Ghana is great. South Africa, yes, yeah, South Africa, Ghana. But they don't end there too, you know. There are still some other countries apart from South Africa and Ghana. Kenya, Kenya is a great country when it comes to the exchange rate compared to Nigeria. Egypt, thank you, Egypt, thank you. Morocco, thank you, you know, thank you. So guys, I hope you're getting inside. I mean, I remember um, Kolawale Kudus, I think he's the current uh, president of uh, Federation of uh, Fashion Designers in Nigeria, okay? Uh, I read a story some years back where the king of Morocco contacted him to make clothes for him. He's a Nigerian designer selling to the king of a whole country. There's no height to which you can not rise. <laughs> the way you look at the world 
will determine how far you will go. Okay, so I've seen some other countries like Turkey. In fact, Turkey is a hotbed for importing fashion wares. So rather than selling to customers over there, they would rather even bring it to you here. Now, nobody has mentioned the uh, Dubai, the United Arab Emirates. Nobody has mentioned um, Qatar. Those are places where you can actually find Nigerians living in. In fact, it's on record, Nigerians are in over 120 countries in the world where you can get uh, Nigerians, you know, who are residing there. So guys, there you have it. I mean, we just done the first part, identifying countries, right? Where you, their currencies are better than ours and which you can leverage. Okay, I mean, I have some Nigerian designers that sell to people in Australia. Yeah, Murala K as of 2019, I remember. She was shipping clothes to customers in Australia. In spite of Australia being at the far end of the world, she was shipping clothes to them. So guys, the first part is identifying countries, you know, that have currencies that are better than us. Then the second is uh, focus on those countries where there is an opportunity for you. There, is, there, is, there are financial systems, you know, that allow you to receive payments and also shipping of products to them. Okay. So I think that's one other thing I missed earlier. There should be also, there should also be a means by which you can ship products to them. If you can solve that, that problem, you are good to go. Oh, how do you solve that problem? Please join my millionaire tribe. We'll talk more about that there. Here, I'm to open your eyes to the directions you can take, okay? So, for countries that can uh, that you can have great transactions in, wow. let me give you one of the platforms that can help us. It's a popular platform in case you don't know about it now, you know. It's called seller.co. Seller. S-E-L-A-R dot C-O. Go check them out. When you're on seller, you can actually create or you can create uh, your online store to sell your physical products and you can receive current you can receive payments in eight currencies now i'm not the ambassador i'm not the ambassador i sell on their platform okay i have an online store on seller and it has been very helpful in getting international payments i've received payments in the us in the uk i mean several parts of the world okay Okay, how do you mean by you uh, You have to be verified? If you are exporting, it's a different case. If you are selling from Nigeria to any part of the world, all you need is to go and open an e-commerce account with uh, international shippers like DHL, okay? But if you are exporting, you know, if you are exporting, it's a different ball game. So with exporting, that means you have... Um, you know, you are into bulk production and you have international uh, brands that have contracted you to sew for them or, yeah, to sew for them or, you know, they've ordered for your product to list on their stores. That's how it works, please. So exporting is a different ball game. You start from where you are and then you grow into exporting. And we are going to be doing exporting, okay? Then you should have a fair understanding of board garment production. Yeah. So I just keep that in, you know, to spice up the conversation. So that said, you you have opportunities to sell. I have a friend, okay, Shedrach. Shedrach tours uh, Ghana, Mali, Senegal. Even goes as far as Gambia, okay, to sell his uh, clothing, and he charges in dollars. He's based here in Lagos. Yeah, he's based here in Lagos, in Festac area of Lagos, and he sells. Uh, he's into bespoke tailoring, not even ready to wear bespoke tailoring. But his customers are presidents of these countries, you know governors, ministers, top ranking people in these countries because Nigerian fashion is highly sought after. In case you don't know, you may not value what you 
what you carry, what you have, but leave the shores of this country. You don't need to leave the shores of this country physically. Just have a conversation with someone living in another part of the world about our fashion. And you'll be amazed at how receptive they are to Nigerian fashion. So the same clothing that the average Nigerian will price you down and make you feel like you are not good enough. Someone in the in South Africa will be willing to pay triple the price just so they can get a hold on Nigerian fashion. That's how good our fashion is, you know, and highly sought after. But because many of us are not exposed to the abundance mentality within the fashion space, we tend to, you know, look down on ourselves because the environment we are in already helps us in that in that regard to look down on ourselves. So guys, this is why I'm here to like, you know, spur you in the right direction so you don't give up. So I've said it, you know, find countries right where the currencies, their currencies are better than ours and be sure that amongst this list, focus on only those that you can ship to easily and also receive payments easily. Then the third is you learn how to attract customers within these countries. Those are the three things you need to learn to do, okay? I can help you out if you want to learn how to do that. However, you will need to be in my Millionaire Stripe, okay? The Millionaire Stripe is hosted uh, primarily in my membership community uh, level called Fashion 6 Ultra Gold. That's where we do that. Presently, presently, um, I don't want to mention any price. You need to check, uh, chat me up and you know the price because the price is definitely shooting up. Okay, for the life of me, let me just share it. Currently, it is 60,000 per quarter to help you do 3 million naira per quarter. However, by February of 2022, we will be readjusting it to the proper price, which is 300,000 naira per quarter. Okay? Because the way I work with uh, people to grow their business is this. I charge just 10% of the expected growth that you are working towards. I don't coach people to share information. I coach people to get results. Okay, so I help people, you know, amongst other things, what I do is I help you turn your, your gifts, you know, and your skills in your fashion business into million narrow million dollars make uh, you know uh, generating ventures so what i'm saying in essence is that you have passion for fashion great let's work on your business so that your income can be seven figures anything from a million era or a million dollars whichever one you know comes first so we help you to do that so and um, for helping you in terms of coaching you, mentoring you, guiding you, teaching you, counseling you, and whatnot. I charge just 10% of the expected income. So that is my own coaching fee or training fee, whatever name you call it. Okay. So presently it's a promo because 60K is one fifth of 300K. So in the Fashion 6 Ultra Gold, that is the millionaire tribe, the first level is to help you do a millionaire monthly. Yeah, there are a lot of things you, you can learn to do, you know, to achieve it. My job is to help you shorten your journey to your first million and then turning it into a regular income. That's my job. Help you shorten your journey so you don't have to do trial and error over and over and over and over until you get it right. Okay? So now this kind of conversation we are having is part of my own uh you know initiatives to open people's minds to start seeing that there's wealth around you so you don't stay stuck in one position and uh, let me give you a few insights i remember yesterday we had our million income master class in the in the evening the first in this month the second is going to open happen uh end of this month and during that uh million income master class I asked them, what are you selling? I told them, actually, what are you selling? Okay. Now, when I ask you what you are selling, 
most of the time, the answer you would give me is, oh, I sell ready to wear, I sell shirts, I sell shoes, I sell the trainings and whatnot. But do you know the truth? Those are not the things that you sell. Now, selling is not about products and services. Selling is about the transformation that you want to give your customers. How you now bring about that transformation is what we call products and services. You are a solution provider. So when you have a solution to your target audience's problems, you can express it in different ways. It can be in ready to wear, it can be training, it can be podcasts, it can be uh, collections, it can be whatever. It can be bespoke tailoring, okay? Whatever it is, you can express it in different ways. So it's another level of thinking, guys, really. So we'll have another time when I'll talk about it. Anyways, people told me what they are selling. Initially, they told me, oh, I'm selling a uh, kaftan, I'm selling skirts, I'm selling, selling shoes, I'm selling this, I'm selling that. Mm. Then I told them, guys, you don't know what you're selling. Then I said, what are you actually selling? And then they got it. And I hear, I'm selling confidence. I say, yes. Someone said, I'm selling respect. I said, beautiful. He said, he's selling respect and the confident look. What does that mean? It simply means anyone that buys his clothes, he makes clothes for men and is also venturing into women's wear anyways. So he said, any man that wears the designs he comes up with will get the respect of everybody around them. That's a big promise. That's a big, you know, uh, unique selling point, also known as unique value proposition. So, Guys, you need to know what you are selling. That's another dimension. Once you know what you're selling, you can now express it in different formats. And these formats are what we call your revenue streams. That is means by which you want to get money out of providing that solution to your customers. Okay, that's a discussion for another time. Okay. Uh, anyways, um, I think I've covered this part of uh, you know, uh, you beginning to work on getting international customers. So that's one of the ways by which you can do some of your study in your business. So now, what if you don't know anybody internationally? Hmm. What if you don't know nobody abroad? In the abroad, so to speak, in the local palace. Guys, let me tell you something. You have four degrees of separation from the customer you are looking for abroad. You have four degrees of separation. Okay? from the customer you are looking for abroad. So all those friends you have on Facebook, all those uh, connections that you have on LinkedIn, all those followers on Instagram, all those contacts that you have on WhatsApp, what's their use? There's someone within those contacts that knows someone abroad that needs what you're selling. You need to find out who it is and then reach out to them. Okay? Give them an offer that they can resist, which will make them open doors to you abroad, amongst their friends and families living abroad. Don't limit yourself. Don't think that it's impossible. In fact, let me tell you one quick story. One of us, Bukola, Bukola is awesome. She is in the Millionaire's Tribe, okay? Now, when she signed up for the Millionaire's Tribe and said, oh, coach, I want to be part of the Millionaire's Tribe, and I was like, oh, this is excellent. Please join us. And I told her that before she comes on board, I'll need to do a strategy session. A strategy session is a one-on-one -on -one conversation over the phone where you tell me where you are right now in your business and where you desire to be in the next two years. So in our conversation, you know, we're able to look at what she's doing currently and where she wants to be. Prior to our, our you know, our strategy session, she was in this group listening to, you know, some of those uh, past podcast that we did, especially the one that we did where I asked the question, just like we're doing now. And the question was, if fashion is truly your passion, you can make millions in it. Let's discuss. You know, that was the topic. 
and everybody contributed interestingly to the conversation. Very wonderful, very beautiful conversation we had that day. She said she listened to the, you know, the recording up to 10 times in the course of four days. And she was like, I need to work with this man. And then she came on board. She said she sat back and talked to herself. She talked to herself like David in the Bible talked to himself and said, hey, Bukola, if you want to be doing seven figures, a million and above, you can't continue to do things the same way. And she decided like, oh, let me make a move and talk to people that I know live abroad. She had a former student you know, of ours who attended a fashion school, now living in uh, Scotland. She has a family member in South Africa. She chatted them up and had a conversation with them from chat to calls, and she told them, I would like to do what? Penetrate South Africa and the UK. Can you help me out? And they were like, we've been waiting for you. This is excellent. We can help you. And next thing is, they were telling her, you know, the realities of the, the allocation and the challenges and the opportunities and what she can do, how she can penetrate those spaces. So when we had our, our strategy session, myself and her, she already had what she needed to do a million and above monthly. So we're just plotting it out and I was telling her the st next steps to take. And she's already on it right now. Okay, this is somebody that is doing close to 500K already in a month. Now, the potential is what? Increasing. She's not the only one. I mean, I had another one, I'm, another person I'm going to Timothy turned down someone from Senegal who was going to pay $110. Whereas his bid was $117. It was in this class, he then said about the power of pricing well, and he turned it down. Today, Timothy is already seeing how he can do 1.5 million naira a month. Now, the good news about this is that these, are, these people tell me in two years time, they want to be doing 120 million naira a year. Because I want to be doing about 200 million naira a year. But right now she's working towards her first million monthly. Does it mean it's not impossible? It is way more than possible. That's the journey we are on. So guys, I want to encourage you, give yourself the freedom to express those deep-seated desires that you have. Stop suppressing them. The same way in this session we've had today, you wrote out you know, the goals, I mean, your goal. By December 2021, you want to do a million. You'll be shocked. You may end up doing 700K. <laughs> you may end up doing 1.2 million. It is very possible, guys. It depends on the company you keep. If you keep company with people who think low, you will get low results. If you keep company with people who think high, you will get high results. It is just that. So I'm keeping you company here to steer you to start thinking abundance. So last night, I asked them, since they all know what they are selling now, some of them are selling class and luxury. Someone is selling class and decency. Okay? Can you see different things they're selling? And I asked them, guys, what is Lao Ekoti selling? Help me out. For the life of me, if you ask me the same question, I won't have an answer. It shock you. Don't let it shock you. It's shocking me. I mean, I have an answer. So when I asked them, hey guys, what do you think I am selling? They told me, they said, you are selling the abundance mindset. And that blew me away. I was like, for real, for chizo, for diesel, for diesel. <laughs> I mean, it blew my mind. Like, oh, I'm selling abundance mindset. And they explained it. They were like, oh, can you help people to see the abundance that surrounds them? And you help them to work towards accomplishing it. You help people to build their mindset, to unleash their mindset. So I say, okay, this is excellent. Do you know that that particular statement has become a mantra? It has given me an inspired idea. So next week, we are going to be talking about the abundance mindset. Can you see from our members of my millionaire tribe telling me what they observe that I am selling? So guys, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn and there's a lot to accomplish. So next time you see me, please be thinking abundance, okay? 
Next time you hear Laoye Curtis, please let the only thought that comes to your mind is abundance. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That means I'm a facilitator of abundance in your life. Oh, to God be the glory. Thank you, God, for giving me the opportunity to be a shining light to someone. Guys, the deal is this. Abundance is around you. Always use this statement. What if it worked? What I want to do, what if it worked? Now, please, don't go climbing a tall building, planning to jump down and saying, Laoye Curtis said, what if it worked? Because it will work and you will not be alive to tell us the story. So please, huh? this is not uh, a license to be stupid, <laughs> okay? Or to be going for what is beyond your reach, okay? When I say what's beyond your reach, I'm saying, just fantasizing. No, this is not a fantasy thing. It's about you looking at your life, having a deep set of discussion with yourself and say, is this where I'm supposed to be? Where do I desire to be by now? And then reach out. When you get to where you are supposed to be by now, you will see new heights that you can aim for. Okay. So right now, quit all of this nibbling on your past failures, your lack, your bad story, your, your stories growing up, the mess that is around you, and own your future. That's what I'll say. So second point I'd like you to note is apart from working on getting international customers, you can feed fat locally. You can feed fat locally. Now, how does that work? One, you need to understand that you cannot go to America and become an alligator. If in Nigeria you are a lizard, both of them are in this, they belong to the same species, but their capabilities are not the same. If you are a lizard that chickens out in Nigeria, when you get to America, you will get into a, a many situations where you will be taken advantage of. If you are an alligator before you leave Nigeria, when you get to America, oh my God, you will flourish because nobody can take you for a ride. Okay, so what I'm saying in essence is that you cannot claim to be what you are not. So look at your present situation right now. Look at your present business right now. Look at the things that you are selling right now in terms of, you know, the products. I'm talking in terms of products. I'm not just saying what you are selling in terms of uh, selling as it were. But what you're selling in terms of generating revenue through products or services. Look at the product that you're selling. Look at the pricing that you are selling them at. And ask yourself, if I continue at this level, how long will it take me to get to one million naira per month? Whatever the answer is, let it be your cry, your right, your rallying, your rallying cry. Yeah, your rallying cry to do better. What I'm saying in essence is that if the best you have ever charged is 5,000 Naira, you need to sew 200 units of whatever clothes you're selling before you can make a million. Now, can you do 200 in a month? If you can't, then you already know that uh, your journey is not soft. It is hard. So you need to do what? Confront all of those demons that make you afraid to do what? Charge better. Now, for those of you that think it's until you go to fashion school to learn better, to become more, to become, you know, perfect, you know, than you are right now, please stop wasting your time. For those of you that you are still in fashion school and uh, you've realized that, okay, out of 10 types of clothing, you are very good at four, but you are waiting until you get to the 10th before you can uh, start earning money. Please, I have to remind you that you are wasting your life. Don't waste your life, please. The four that you are good at, they are good enough for you to be doing seven figures. Yes. I mean, I've seen people that tell me, oh, the fashion school they went to, you know, they were taught men's wear, children's wear, women's wear. When I ask them, how many can you undo in a day? How many can you undo in a month? You realize that they can't even finish the men's way. So I tell them, oh, what you learned in the fashion school is good because your exposure is widened. 
However, when it comes to any money, you don't need to do so much to earn more. That's just the secret. I mean, one of us, she's here listening to us now. I mean, she shared uh, one of her uh, testimony on one of my recorded sessions. Okay, Kikaloma by name, you know, where she shared with us that uh, she was able to do about 780,000 in October from a business. Whereas between May and July this year, that is three months, she never racked up up to 100,000 era in three months. So that means when you calculate how much she earned in May, June, and July, and add the three together, she didn't make up to 100K. She joined my membership club, Fashion 6 Ultra, at the lowest level, that is Fashion 6 Ultra Bronze, where we coach and mentor them, right, to do 100K and above monthly. And in her first month, she set a sales goal of 100K. She earned 132000 Second month, she earned 195,000 because when you earn the sales, well, I tell you to double it for the next month. And by the third month, she was supposed to set the sales goal of 400K, but she did 788,000 Naira. I reached out to her and I told her, my dear, please upgrade to the Fashion 6 Ultra Gold, the Millionaire Drive. That would help you to sustain this growth that you have achieved. And she, she gladly obliged. So today she's a member of the Millionaire Tribe because she's on a, an upward trajectory. My point in this is this, guys. She worked on her pricing. She worked on her pricing, okay? She worked on her sales and her marketing skills. Yes and apply what she learned and she's getting better by the day. The same thing applies to you. So guys, you can scale within the local community, okay? Because in this same country where they say there is no money, people are still cashing out. Haven't you noticed that there's an upward dip in the volume of uh, you know, people that are into real estate, advertising real estate products. Now, real estate is not cheap. You notice there are many real estate companies selling land all across the country. Now, it isn't ghosts that are buying those lands. It isn't angels that are buying those lands. It is people that are buying those lands. And they are not buying them in thousands. They are buying them in millions. We're talking about millions. Now, where are those guys buying those uh, real estate? Where do they get the money from? Do they go to the meetings where they, you know, check out the land? make the purchases do they go there naked they don't go there naked right they go there well dressed who is making the clothes for them now these are not celebrities i'm telling you i'm telling you about regular nigerians right nigerians that are buying real estate buying landed properties lands and all they are people like you and me not celebrities not politicians where is the money coming from they wear clothes right so what stops you from being the person making clothes for them how do you find those people okay those are the things that you need to be looking into please spread your net you are living in a burden and the only thing you say is if I don't people charge the charge, uh, they, they, they price you down. If the bad on people do not make the, 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 the bad on people do not uh, pay good and what not. Guys, please. Ibadan is not the only city in the country. There are other cities in the country. Can you for once just give yourself the permission to think that you can be based in Ibadan where your cost of living is lower while your customers are in Lagos? in Abuja, in Port Harcourt, and you are 
contributing to them why do you we do we have dhl why do we have god is good motors you know logistics gig logistics how do we have them they are available to help you take your merchandise merchandise and deliver to customers across the country so guys please do not limit yourself to your immediate location anymore it is time to hop your game okay it is time for you to start looking at your pricing it is time to start looking at your targeting in terms of the kind of customers that you are targeting i'm not saying you should stop uh, you know selling to those you're selling to right now no far from it i remember when i was uh, when i organized the monthly coaching back in 2017 for 1000 euro per month and I told participants of that particular, you know, coaching program, Fashion, uh, Fashion Club NG, that was the name at the time, Fashion Club NG, yeah. I told them that uh, between, I think, was it not between September or so of 2017 and uh, February of 2020, uh, so, uh, 2018. Well, at any rate, uh, February of 2018 would have made it six months into the program. So I told them, Oh, by February of 2018, I will no longer be collecting a uh, thousand euro per month for them from them. At the time, I remember one of my clients who applied some of the things she learned in the coaching that got her a contract to be to set up a sewing club in a predominantly white, you know, uh, white people's school, expat, expatriate school in uh, VI. Okay, I think VI Lekki Axis, for which he was paying, being paid up to 500,000. So imagine I'm coaching people at 1,000 Naira per month and they are applying what they are learning and it's getting them 500,000 Naira contracts. Can you imagine? I mean, that was stupid of me, really. But then, you know what? I had to also exercise those demos, my own pricing demos then. I remember then it was dress evangelism I taught them. The lady applied the dress evangelism and those white school administrators just loved address sense and were like, can you please set up a sewing club for our students? They already got our students. At the time, they paid her in dollars. Yes, when she converted the money to never, it was 500,000. So guys, people have been cashing out, you know, through my coaching. That's four years ago. So then I told them, oh, by February 2020, the 2018, right, I was going to stop uh, 1,000 1, per month. Reason being that these were people that I started coaching with, you know. So along the line, I brought in a new set of people. So while these people were, this first set of people were paying a thousand euro a month, I was advertising to new sets of people and telling the new sets of people their price was 5,000 euro per month. And I set a goal of me getting about uh, maybe five new people or 10 new, or oh, 10 new people per month at the time. So by the time we got to, this started in November, 2020, sorry, in December, 20. 17. So by February, I had gotten about 30 people that were paying 5,000 euro per month. So when I looked at how much they were, I was earning from 30 people, that was 150,000 per month. Whereas I had, um, I had um, about a hundred other people that were paying me 1,000 euro. So the hundred people that were paying me 1,000 euro earned me 100 K in monthly revenue. Whereas just 30 people and me 150k in a month so by february 2018 i changed the rules and i told everyone hey i i told you six months ago that the price was going to be sh shooting up to five thousand so please you have to be paying five thousand for tweet and then 80 of them left i was left with about 20. the 20 are going to be paying 5k that was another 100,000. So the 100,000 there, this 20 we're going to be paying is even way more than, uh, sorry, already equaled this other, uh, I mean, the 1,000 they were paying. Now, when I add the 100K to the 150, my income shot up to 250. That is from monthly coaching. 
aside from personal coaching of about 50k at the time for which i used to have an average five uh, people that signed up a month so my point is this guys you don't have to throw away your existing customers right now just admit that oh where i am right now i think my pricing is not going to help me get to seven figures fast what do i need to change about my situation okay oh there's an online course that can help you okay fine can you afford it no can you save up for it yes start saving up oh there's a coaching program that can help me get to a million as soon as possible okay how much i earn right now oh i own just uh twenty thousand a month and the coaching program is what is sixty thousand. Oh, i can't even save up for that okay does he have another one i can go for guys always be looking for opportunities to help yourself grow okay always be looking for opportunities to help yourself grow i invest in paid trainings myself because no one is an island of knowledge that's all i can say guys i'm not advocating for you to come and buy my programs you don't have to i mean the free classes we are holding i've heard enough people tell me that their situations have improved drastically i mean timothy here told us that he it was uh, it he improved his pricing before it wasn't charging above five thousand. When he attended the class we did some weeks back, where I talked about pricing as a limiting factor for some people not really making big numbers in their businesses. He said he just got an idea from that class and he was like, "Hey, I'm going to improve my pricing." The next customer that walked in, hear my words, the next customer that walked in to his workshop, he charged them. 10,000 euro that is double of what you usually charge and they happily they paid you know uh they happily paid or they paid happily which of course first or whichever is the correct you know syntax the interesting thing is this it has boosted his confidence and he's even charging way higher now and he's getting more people turning up you know saying hey i want to do business with you we were talking yesterday he set a sales goal of three hundred thousand for this month he is a member of the millionaire tribe he said as of yesterday he's already close to half of the three hundred thousand euro sales goals he set and i'm like wow interesting guys things are happening the thing is, who are you rolling with? Who are you working with? It's already two hours. I need to keep quiet. Thank you so much. I think that is where this will end. God bless you. Okay. Until when, when next we have another conversation, okay? Still on the matter of uh, earning seven figures. I will be talking about my framework for helping you do seven figures in your fashion business. I call it the million, the abundance mindset yes that is it thank you